Hey everyone, Crumbs here. So I finally finished up a new design for my cart station. It is two wide tileable, it's only four blocks tall and eight blocks deep. And you can use it, you can expand it or shrink it down depending on how many you want. You need maybe like one additional block off to the side for the loading mechanism and then you need a pulse extender feeding in from uh, wherever minecarts are coming from. It can work with partially filled, or completely filled or empty chest minecarts. Just not the the empty minecarts by themselves end up stacking up with something else. And it can work with mobs as well. While I was testing it out in survival, I was running it back and forth between a place about 600 blocks away. And then just to just to make sure it worked over long distances, I ran it from all over there about 3,000 blocks out to out to the other end and back. And it seems to work. And it seems to work fine. So I used the replay mod to record building this up over at my mega build perimeter. And I did it layer by layer, so with that you should be able to pause and see what each layer looks like. I'll do a little voiceover, make sure I explain any little details or you know, like repeater timings and things like that. And then, but today I also went ahead and built up a couple copies, including a full feature version in a, in a world that I'm going to make a, available as a world download. So if you want to just skip everything and check that out, cool. So I'll just have a quick time with the voiceover showing me build it layer by layer. And then I'll hop into the creative world and go over everything. So to start everything here is mob proof. You don't want mobs running around on your tracks because they will mess it up. They can get some stuck or sent back. I'm taking input from the, the two detector rails into a sort of pulse extender. Again, I don't recommend you build it like this, uh, but the everything else is fine. So the repeaters behind the observers are two ticks so they can interact with the uh, redstone torches and the repeaters in front are going to be all on four ticks here. But you can mess around with the timings a little. It's just a question of how tight the, the minecarts are going to be to each other. All right, the back row of repeaters there. Most of them are on one tick. The first one coming out of the pulse extender is on two ticks. I mean, because it needs to be on at least two ticks somewhere in order to be able to interact with the, the redstone torches properly. And again, because of the, the orientation here, I have a bunch of the curved rails are going to be powered. So that's why I placed the, that many redstone blocks. I'm adding one item for each pair of hoppers, which are pointing into each other. And that observer facing up is gonna transmit the signal down to activate all the defense gates one after another. I'm setting this up for seven minecarts at each station. So as you see in the back, I only need the reset function for the first six because the last doesn't need to switch. And I'm making sure here there's a solid block above so the pulse extender won't bleed over and activate the fence gates. But if I had more room, I'd use a, a proper setup like I'll show in the world download. And this is all the way on the other end, about 3,000 blocks. I just wanted to test it out to make sure it worked. And you can see here, the empty minecart and the donkey stacked up together. So, again, this works with any kind of full or empty chest minecarts. And this is actually compact enough to fit just in the, the decorative structure that I had but I think I'll push it up by one block because it's, it'd be painful to not have just a little bit more room. When the player gets out of the minecart, it's, yeah, it, it helps to have just a little bit of room, so I'd, I'd have at least one block air gap above the whole thing. So this is a world that I'm gonna make available for download, and these two here are the basic stripped down version. This is what I'm building up in Mountain Survival World. I have actually proper pulse extenders here. <laughs> and this here is the is a, is a version of the full feature set. So you can flip the switch in the front and have it go, have the minecarts go off either direction. And then you have pulse extenders and the input system from the back. So it can accept minecarts coming in from either direction and send them out either direction. But you can do, you can handle all that just by bringing them in from one side and then having a switch that changes the, the direction everything's coming from or going to. So it's just not worth building up this, but I figured I'd go ahead and make a copy anyway just in case anyone was interested in it. And just a warning to anyone who does look at this, some of the, the wiring is a little rough. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I'd actually recommend building it like this, but it is it is possible. It seems to it seems like it can be made to work, but these are the, the versions here that I've actually, that I'm really happy with. This is a basic slice that I extracted just to show how it works. When you have minecarts coming in from the side, you need to take a 
output. It just always depowers the same torches. So that way it'll always make sure the curved rail healer is facing the correct direction. And if you can see how things are aligned, now you do have to pay attention to where these are, depending on which direction the minecarts are coming from, and depending on which direction the curved rails are going to naturally sit. So you may need to move just this one line of blocks here, one block to the left or the right, in order to actually get it to, to line up properly. So whenever the minecarts come in, it'll sit on this detector rail, and it'll power this piston, which seems to activate these at the at basically the same time. It'll depower it long enough to switch sides, so it'll always give it the other orientation. And as you see here, it does reset when it leaves. So it seems like you may not need this input here in the back to make sure it's always set. If you're messing around with something or you break in place something, it's it's always good, at least for me, to have something that will reset it. And here in the creative world, I have these repeaters set to 4 and 1, 4, 1. In my survival world, I'm currently running them just all at 4. But you need to have at least a little bit of time in between so they don't have, have problems to stack up. Uh, you also, there's a difference in which direction the curved rails face. So for some directions, you may need them, them powered. In other directions, you can leave them unpowered. This may look a little odd having Swiss redstone and uh, having this corner here like this. But in my survival world, I wanted to be able to move around uh, donkeys or horses. The donkey's hitbox could clip through a block if it was sitting on top of here. And they'd take suffocation damage. This is an example of the type of pulse extender I recommend. You're taking inputs every time it goes through and it only sends one signal out the first for the first minecart. In my survival world, I made a version that will give an output at the beginning and the end. That's really not a good idea. I only get away with it because of how short it is because I'm only using seven minecarts, but it would actually be a, a problem if I had more. So just to show the full feature set, right, this will swap the rails and it also swaps whether when you hit one of the, the note blocks, it'll send a signal down to release them in, in one direction or the other. I just do that by pushing a block in or out of the way. So currently it'll send them off that way. So it's kind of cool to have that kind of feature set, but ultimately it's completely unnecessary. And it just takes up uh, additional space, and the wiring gets messy. So yeah, in my opinion, it's not worth it. But I just figured I'd include it because that was my uh, initial design. But I definitely recommend using using these versions instead. So this was uh, the first version of the full feature set with uh, the new design. So the wiring down here on this version looks a little bit cleaner. I'm using repeaters. So if it's going in one direction, so it will come down this side. And if it's going the other direction, so it will come down the other way. But it's still basically the same. I'm just taking another output from here on the same line that changes the direction of the rails. And it pushes or pulls the, the pistons to move this block in or out of the way. I was looking for ways to, to decrease the, the volume. Like there are some ways you could feed in from, from the bottom. But ultimately, this is uh, the version I picked. So I was trying a variety of things to <laughs> make it a bit more compact, especially get it down to two wide tileable. I was working on some, some variations using target blocks, trying to pull stuff from the side or below, but ultimately I couldn't come up with a good solution for that. So I was playing around with odd things, trying to figure out different ways to, to power observers together or separately. <laughs> like this mess, trying to figure out how to get it more compact. So well, I wasn't able to get it, I guess, quite as far down as I want. But this is this is really good. I'm really happy with it anyway. Yes, yeah, so this is the the base here, <laughs> and I'm not gonna complain. This here is the previous version, <laughs> the initial one. It's really large and expanded. That has a bunch of stuff on the top and the bottom, and it's only three wide tileable. So I only ever actually built this up here, and over at my main storage, so I bring the lots of materials over from my Nether Fortress farm. 
but <laughs> yeah, I consider this a rather impressive improvement. You fit into really small, really small spaces, and it still works great. The world download will be in 116.2, which is the one I'm currently using, but I did make a copy update it to 119.2, and it seemed like everything still worked fine. So feel free to, <laughs> to take a look, update it to whatever version you're you're messing around with. Uh, hopefully it'll work. <laughs> it seems it seems really very simple. I'm not doing anything crazy. I hope y'all enjoyed or found something interesting. And uh, hopefully this helps someone else <laughs> out as well. So y'all take care. Cheers.